Have you ever watched a tarantula eating? It is super weird, it's a bit grace, it takes forever and there is so much going on. I'm Caitlin Henderson with Mini Beast Wildlife and in today's episode of our tarantula keeping series, we're getting into the finer details of feeding tarantulas. This is one of the number one things we are asked about, so we're gonna cover this in some serious detail. If you're looking for a brief overview, just check out our previous video on tarantula keeping basics. Tarantulas are ambush predators that hunt from a burrow or a hide at night. They're detecting their prey using vibrations and they're only gonna attack something that passes pretty close to the mouth of the burrow and that isn't so large it could be a threat or a predator. We also know they can feed on dead food by detecting the taste through their feet, but how often this happens in the wild isn't known. Once they catch something, they'll inject it through their fangs with this venom cocktail that can quickly paralyze and kill. Now the venom glands sit in the chalicea, I've got some here from a malt, and the venom comes out not quite at the tip, so the opening can't get gummed up and the fang is stronger. With resistance taken care of, now we get to the eating part. They need to liquefy their food before they can suck it up through the mouth opening, so they regurgitate digestive juices onto their prey. They also have some serious teeth, but not like in their mouth. They're on the bottom of the chalicea and they use them to mash up their prey into a horrifying goo before they suck it up. Describing this never gets old. Often not long after they've started feeding, tarantulas will turn in circles and lay down a silk sheet, which they'll drag over the food mass and feed from a wrapped package like many other groups of spiders. And lots of keepers think this looks like they're doing some kind of happy dance. So what happens really often is that new keepers will get a tarantula, chuck it into an enclosure, throw in a cricket, and then start to get really nervous after a few days when the tarantula still hasn't eaten. It's totally normal to worry because if you're not used to spiders, not eating for a couple of days can seem like a catastrophe. I know I would die, but your spider isn't broken. If it's just had a big move, it's gonna be unsettled, it's not gonna be hunting normally, and it's fine to let it have up to like a week to settle in. As well as when they've been disturbed or moved, tarantulas are less likely to eat during the day, they won't eat when they're approaching a malt, and they won't eat when they don't need to. If you've been feeding a tarantula regularly for a while, you might find it suddenly just stops taking food, maybe for a period of months. It's just reached as much as it can hold. It's super full and it's not using much energy. You can't fit anything else in there. Tarantulas who are getting ready for a molt or aren't interested in food will often seal up the entrance to their burrow or hide with silk. And as long as the environmental conditions in the enclosure are correct, you don't need to do anything. Just leave them be. Trust your tarantula. Your tarantula knows best. How often and how much to feed your tarantula is going to depend on how much energy it's using. So that's going to be more during periods of growth and activity and also more when the temperature is higher. Tarantula's metabolism speed up when it's warmer and slow down when it's cooler. So that's gonna mean more food in summer, less food in winter, unless you're keeping your enclosures at a constant temperature all year round. So you can work off a schedule, say once a week for feeding or twice if you've got a young spider doing a lot of growing or it's just gotten warmer. And this works especially well if you're tarantula has burrowed and you can't physically monitor it. The best thing to do though, if you can, is keep an eye on the size of your spider's abdomen and go from there. I've got a chart here you can download from the Mini Beast Wildlife website. I'll link in the video description. On the left, that's a skinny spider that needs serious attention. In the middle, the spider will take food, but it's not in danger if it misses a feed. Don't panic. On the right, it's likely to refuse food and vulnerable to popping if it falls, so you can ease back on the insects for a while. We've also got recommended prey sizes down here. Tarantulas can sometimes take pretty large prey, but it does mean they're gonna be full for a long time. So in general, it's best to stick with something around a third of the size of the spider. And we've given you a bit of an idea here what you might choose as your spider grows. There's a few kinds of feeder insects you can get from pet shops and breeders, most commonly crickets, cockroaches and mealworms. You can also feed your tarantula insects you catch from the wild, as long as you know they're not dangerous to the spider, but keep in mind the increased risk of introducing a parasite into the enclosure. At Mini Beast Wildlife, we usually prefer to feed our tarantulas crickets because live cockroaches burrow into the substrate and mealworms are basically insect cheeseburgers, but there's always room to mix it up a little. As we covered in our Keeping Basics, you can feed live or dead prey to your tarantula. The main benefit of feeding freshly killed or frozen prey is that it can't turn up later in the enclosure chewing on your molting tarantula, but not every spider will take dead prey every time, so you'll have to trial it and see what works best for your spider. 
If you feed freshly killed insects, just place them by the edge of the burrow or hide and check again in the morning. Remove them if they aren't eaten to avoid mold developing. With live feeders, you can toss them in just about anywhere, check again the next day. Again, remove uneaten prey in this case to make sure it doesn't nibble on your spider. Hungry tarantulas will often eat right away, but if you don't want to miss the action, there's a couple of things you can do to make sure you've got the best chance of seeing it happen. After dark, open the enclosure without bumping it too much. Drop the prey in with a pair of forceps near the front of the spider, but not touching it. If the spider is ready to feed, they'll often pounce immediately and you can watch the whole process happen in front of you. If you've got a camera nearby, you might even be able to catch it on video and see it up close, like we're doing now. That's all for this episode, but we've got so much more coming that you guys have been asking for. So follow or subscribe to keep updated when we release our next videos on tarantula keeping. If you've got photos or videos of your tarantula feeding, absolutely show them off to us. We'd love to see how you're doing it.